I had been feeling very sick for a long time. Finally, I asked my parents if I could see their doctor. And the minute that doctor looked at me, he said he knew I was in heart failure and he wanted me to go into the hospital because they thought that I needed a heart transplant right then. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have communicated with our donor's family. A few weeks ago, we were able to meet her face to face. So yeah, it, was a, it was a really great experience. So we were actually at, um, <laughs> at the mall one day and we saw uh, a bear where you can kind of build it. We worked with some of the nurses and, and techs at Hopkins and we were able to obtain a recording of the heartbeat. Uh, so this is this way she could have it with her all the time. Squeeze it. Yeah, it's the same. Hi, So you got his heart in here. Yeah. I was born with TGA, which is the transposition of the great arteries. And that basically means that my pulmonary artery and aorta are doing each other's jobs, which over time makes the heart much, much weaker. And then by, by the time I was 22, I had started going into heart failure. So I first met Marion in 2002, oh, yeah. and um, we sort of patched her up. Uh, and she got a lot better and then just absolutely cruised for 10, 15 years. And it was clear at some point that things were beginning to slip. And the only way to go at this point was going to be either a durable ventricular assist device or, or transplant. And given her size and her wishes, uh, I think the right choice was made, which to, was to go for a transplant. When that happens, it's great to bring in the rest of the heart failure, heart transplant team such as our social workers, our nutritionists, our nurse practitioners, transplant coordinators, and our surgical colleagues like Dr. Kilich, who is the surgical director of heart failure and heart transplantation, and who is Marion's surgeon as well. The difficulty with heart transplantation is that we have to wait for the appropriate donor to become available. And that's probably the toughest part is the unpredictability. Oftentimes, as was the case in, uh, with Marion, you have to be in the hospital awaiting this organ to become available. So it puts a lot of strain on you emotionally. And that's why we have a host of specialists that kind of come in and ensure that you're mentally ready. Marion was always ready. <laughs> I didn't necessarily have to worry about her because she was always cheerful and always, you know, and kind of up and go kind of person. Good to see you too. I'm gonna hug. <laughs> My wait in the hospital was actually a really good experience. The nurses are incredible, the doctors are great, and it didn't feel like I was in a hospital. It felt more like I was hanging out in a sorority with my girlfriends. I waited for 35 days, and the morning that I had my heart transplant, the attending had come in by himself, which is not normal. I asked, what are you doing here? <laughs> he actually came in to tell me that they had a possible heart for me that day. The operation for Marion was probably the simplest part of her care, to be honest. She never had previous surgeries before in her chest. Her donor was a perfect donor. And despite her anatomy having what we call that congenitally corrected transposition, once you took care of her own heart or you took it out, the anatomy was normal. For those reasons, her operation was somewhat straightforward. For her, her operation or that component of it took less than 50 minutes. But the whole setup and everything else that went into her waiting took a couple months. Good to see you, and you we will touch base tomorrow with the yeah. results. Immediately after surgery, I felt circulation that I'd never had before. Um, I became very overheated, but the new heart was obviously working very, very well. Today was my 15-month biopsy, and the biopsies are measuring if your heart's going into rejection or not. Heart biopsy and the echocardiogram will be done every week initially, followed by every two weeks for a while, then every month for a while, then every quarter for a while, and then after about two or three years, we will stop doing it because at that point, the risk of rejection has dramatically declined. Johns Hopkins has a heart transplant support group. The doctors from the cardiac unit attend, as well as the coordinators, and we get to meet new patients who are awaiting a heart transplant or just check up on the rest of us that have already gone through our transplants. 
My main focus now is making sure that I'm taking my medications on time, getting as much exercise as I can, and doing everything I can to make sure that Michael's heart stays healthy and, and I can honor him and his family.